then he parked his car and we walked to Studio A, 8 and 9, where it was being filmed. And he said, from now on, I can't help you. I'm expecting William Shatner to drive up in a couple of hours. He has a silver Mercedes, and we were told his license number because he's allowed to drive right up to the studio door. And, and we were told where his trailer was, but we had two hours to do nothing. But then uh, we were just standing around there for a while, and then I saw Walter Koenig waving us over, and he waved us over where Lieutenant Uhura and Sulu were standing. And we had a very nice conversation with them, and I was very nervous. I kept ask, asking them, is Bill Shatner really nice? I hope he's not mad. I hope he's really nice. And then uh, Lieutenant Uhura said, no problem. I'm sure he'll be very nice. And they and we got their autographs, and we talked to them for a few more minutes. And they were pretty surprised at how we got in. And then we, did, uh, we had about an hour and a half to do absolutely nothing. And but there was so much security around there. Security guards kept coming up to us and asking us things. Where um, And Walter Koen Koenig said, if we were approached by anyone, mm -hmm. make up a story of how you're working on a set of Happy Days or something. And that could get you by, because no one is allowed around that area. And uh, didn't he tell you also that uh, you're not supposed to uh, uh, tell him that, uh, tell anyone that he got you? Right. Room? We weren't supposed to tell anybody that Walter Koenig helped us on. I guess he was afraid that he might get into trouble because each star is allowed so many people a month to bring in and um, and he was actually bring, uh, bringing in two total strangers so what happened was that this one security guard in particular came up to us while he was riding on his bike and said what are you doing here here girls and I quickly said my friend and I are working on a set of happy days and we're just here on a break. And he said, well, I want you to get out of this area right now. It's close set, and I don't want to see you around here again. But now my friend and I had come so close that we didn't want to blow it. So what Sandy and I did was we went upstairs on the second floor in the washroom cubicles, mm -hmm. and we sat there with our feet up on the seat, just shaking in total fear. So, and we heard these steps coming up to the washing and we were so scared and we thought it was the security guard and lucky for us it wasn't then my friend Sandy looked out of the window and the uh, in the washing second floor and she saw Bill Shatner drive by and she said come on Laurie there he is there he is and I said no I can't go and I just sat there frozen I was just terrified at the thought then she said this is our only chance because the security guard kept circling around and around I guess he was trying to find out if we actually went back to the happy day set so we we went out there and and we started to walk up to his car and and we saw William, William Shatner get out of his car and lean over into his back seat to get something and Sandy walked ahead of me I said Sandy I can't go and she said he's standing right there you have to go and the shock of actually seeing somebody that you've been a fan of for so many years is very very frightening so Sandy said excuse me and Bill Shatner turned around and said, what do you want? What are you doing here? And I said, we, uh, we're from Winnipeg. And he said, why don't you go back to Winnipeg? How did you get in here? And we couldn't tell him the story that Walter Koenig took us in. And so we had to tell him the story of what happened the day before about us just walking in. And he said, the security guards are supposed to protect us from people like you. I want you to come with me, to me immediately. And at and at that moment, I was ready to blow up at him. I didn't know if I should cry or if I should laugh or, I sh or anything. So we had to follow him into his dressing room beside his. And he put us in there and he said, I don't want you to move a muscle. Don't move. And he shut the door and he locked it. Now, my friend and I were almost in tears. We thought the security guards were going to come and take us and throw us out. And I tried to look on the bright side of it. Well, at least I got to meet Bill Shatner. Not in the way I thought, but at least I got to meet him. So then, uh, all of a sudden, we heard this knock at the, at the door, and the door opened up, and there was this alien standing here with a great big head on him. And he said, come with me. I've orders from Captain Kirk. You are to follow me immediately. And my friend and I didn't know what was happening. And we got out of the dressing room that Bill Shatner had told us to stay in, and we walked up to the big studio doors with security guards lined up. Studio 8 and 9 where the Star Trek movie was being filmed and he waved off the security guards and told them it was all right 
and he opened up the doors and we walked in and there we were standing in front of the whole set of Star Trek with all of the stars standing around us and we got to sit in those director and actors chairs and we got to see them them rehearsing a scene I guess it was on the bridge and then this other alien came up to us and said you are to follow me immediately so Sandy and I thought why not let's follow him so we followed him and as it turned out uh, we, uh, we, uh, we were dropped on every set by a different alien and we were told to stay there, not breathe and not move a muscle and wait for somebody else to come and take us to another set. So actually, this is the way we had a tour of the whole set. It was uh, William Shatner's elaborate way of getting you around. Yes, by that time, apparently, everyone had heard about us on the set and William Shatner had played a practical joke on us. And he acted that way at the beginning. Now, I don't know how he found out about us coming, if they contacted him at the security gate or if he just, I don't know how he found out. But as it turns out, we ended up on the, on the transporter platform, as it says in the book, mm -hmm. ready to be beamed away. And it was just a remarkable experience. And, and after seeing the set and meeting the stars, we waited outside for Bill Shatner to come. And this one man we had become friends with, I guess a technician, mm -hmm. his name, name was Buzz, I believe, he said, oh, we asked him, oh, what does Bill Shatner have planned for us now? We had seen the set, and he had just said, that's it. And we wanted to meet him again. So luckily, this man, who was very nice, went on the set and said, you'll have to wait for Bill Shatner. So about 10 minutes later, here is Bill Shatner walking out of the studio doors with his admiral suit on, something like this. And he had this big smile on his face. And he walked up to my friends and I, and they were told that I was a big Star Trek fan. So Bill Shatner walked up to me, and he put his arm around me. And I started walking with him to his dressing room door. And here I am looking up at Captain Kirk, or Admiral Kirk, as he is now. Shoot your heart out. Right in, it was an, an, ama an amazing feeling, and then Uhura walked by and went, so that was really nice of her. And then Bill Shatner took Sandy and I into his dressing room, and he talked to us for a while, and he asked us how we got in, and he also asked us not to tell anybody of our experience. I guess he was afraid of the publicity that was involved in it, but once it came out in Chekhov's Enterprise, I guess there was no fear of uh, of being found out because it was written up in a book and so he um, so my friend and I left and I shook his hand and I asked him for a kiss and <laughs> and so I gave Bill Shatner a kiss and then he said thank you for coming and he really appreciated the um, he called it the trouble we went through but I kept telling him that it was no trouble at all and um, and after that our technician friend said gave us a map and said you're free to go on any of the of the other studios you want. So he took us on the set of Happy Days, and he passed us off as his nieces, <laughs> and he introduced us to Henry, Henry Winkler and Ronnie Howard, and then we ended up having lunch in the commissary with all of the stars around us. There's Anson Williams right there, Laverne and Shirley, half of the Star Trek people, and and we were allowed to go on the set of Taxi and the other sets, and by that time it was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and that was, that was our experience on, on, in Paramount Studios. You, did you see Walter Koenig again at any time right on? Oh, yes, we did. As a matter of fact, on the way out, we wanted to thank him again because he was, he was a great help, and without him we couldn't have had our adventure, as mm -hmm. he said. We wrote him a thank you note, and we walked up to his dressing room door, knocked on it, and he was in there. And he opened it up, and we gave him the note, and he was writing down something on a piece of paper, and I couldn't figure it out. It didn't look like a script. And at that time, we had no idea that he was actually going to write a book about it, and, and I guess that that's what he was writing. So we gave him the note and thanked him very much, and we wrote our names on it and everything, and he was quite quite pleased with it and I think he appreciated our response because we were just just overjoyed it was such a shock for this to happen to us and then we left for that day and for our next two and a half weeks in California all we said was I can't believe we actually met them and the thought of telling anybody we couldn't tell anybody it was just so 
Unbelievable.